Farrah Fawcett got tapped on a knee or something with a car, and I guess they said no, they changed the coordinator. And a new coordinator came in, and uh, he called me in to uh, double for Kate Jackson. And uh, I was mainly Kate Jackson's double. They doubled fair a few times, but, uh, and Jacqueline Smith once or twice, but mainly Kate. And I was on it four seasons, and uh, the end of the fourth season, fourth season, uh, myself and this, uh, the other stunt girl, uh, Jeannie Coulter, were doubling, uh, I was doubling Farrah Fawcett, she was doubling Cheryl Ladd. We were out at Magic Mountain on an uh, airstrip out there, and uh, we were rehearsing this uh, scene where we both, are in a Ford station wagon, a big old station wagon, a heavy older station wagon, the doors were heavy. And when we were, we were in the back, she was on the right side, I was on the left side. And uh, we were to get out, bail out at a certain point. And we rehearsed it a couple of times with speed to try to get the speed right, that w what we could survive. And they would placed a couple little flags on the runway that we had to be out by those flags. And <coughs> after the rehearsal, well, her, her wig wasn't nailed on good enough, so, uh, and anyway, they, we raced back to the honey wagons, and um, our driver got out and went in his dressing room, and she got out and went in to uh, the dressing room to get her with the hair person to get the wig fixed. I stayed in the car. I was ready, and uh, a guy walks by and said, uh, Bobby got the last of the coke this morning. And I thought, well, I said, who, for this early morning, 8.30 or so, it's 8, 8, 8, I said, who's drinking Coca-Cola at 8.30 in the morning? That was my first thought. And, but the name I knew, and I said, well, why are they out of it? And anyway, by that time, he comes racing out of the thing and gets in there, and she comes in and gets in. We go out to do the stunt, waiting for the director to say action. And uh, but prior to getting into the car again, before we did the actual thing, I said, why am I doing this? I said, you're never going to see me. I'm, there's no camera on my side. They're, oh, yeah, the assistant director said, sure, we got a low camera and a high camera. We'll see you on the high camera. And I said, not for what I'm doing on that side. <laughs> and she said, oh, yes, we will. So I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I hold up production. And uh, sure enough, the actual footage, you barely see my door open. But anyway, I, we do it. And uh, now we're getting, <coughs> we're in the car, and we're, we're speeding down the thing. And we're saying, stop, slow down, slow down, slow down. So, and he wasn't really slowing down like we wanted him to. You should have been slowing down a lot more. And we saw the flags coming up, and we knew we had to be out. And so, and then he really, we felt a slowdown. So we got our doors open. And as soon as we got our doors open, we're getting ready to get out. We're in position to move out of the moving car. He steps on the throttle. Now the doors came back and s slapped us back, practically back into the car. But we got hung up and we got out of position. We couldn't get out right. And then, and he kept going, it was kind of one of these things he kept doing, so the door kept going back and forth. So when I felt she got out, uh, it, was, it was supposed to be one of those tuck and roll things. And uh, all of a sudden I'm feeling, I seem, the, I'm get, trying to get in position to get out and get back. And, but my foot slipping on the side where the door is. And if, I, if my legs had, slipped all the way, I would have been wrapped up in that wheel well with my legs. So I just sort of kicked off with what I had to get out and away from the car. And as I did, I landed on the back of my head and my neck and flipped over. And the, the, it's in my book. <laughs> David did a great job of explaining it. Um, the I'm in convulsions on the ground, and 
there's light all around me. <laughs> Again, I probably shouldn't have come back. Um, Jeannie Coulter had the same feeling. She was out on her feet. Uh, but I'm in convulsions on the ground, and all of a sudden I'm saying, I'm starting to come too. And I said, I think I broke my back. And somebody said, well, why do you think you broke your back? I said, I can't move my legs. Well, the guy was laying on me to keep me still from con in the convulsions. And I, oh, okay. So give me a few more minutes. And they stand me up and they brought over a couple chairs for us to sit in. And we sat there a minute, both of us, you know, with concussions, dazed. We were dazed. They said, bring the t station wagon over, get them over there to the Henry Mayo Hospital, have them checked out. So we go to the hospital, get checked out. They look at us with the, da -da -da -da. Go, go have your doctor check you the next day, make sure somebody wakes you up every two hours during the night, blah, blah, blah. So again, the next day and get your neck x-rayed and oh yeah you have a hairline fracture in your neck and uh, ice <laughs> comes ice again um, but oh what, what, after we come back from the hospital I said Jeannie we gotta we have to get some lunch we had to eat something so they, they had broken for lunch when we got back they were there and the line was there in front of the lunch wagon we got in line so this is the same day. Yeah. You got injured, you went to the hospital, yeah. and you came back after lunch. Yeah. Uh, to, we had a one more shot to do. So we uh, we got in line, and I, I saw our driver up there, and I thought, oh, well, I'd go check with him. Usually they would check with us if they knew we got hurt. They're their first ones there to say, are you guys okay? I'm so sorry. What happened? But anyway, he turned and glared at us. And this guy was somebody we knew as a teddy bear. We liked him. He was a nice guy. And, but this was not his, this was a day that was very, very bad. And uh, he wasn't there. And so she and he stopped me. She said, no, 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 look at him. And I said, okay. So we got something to eat. We went back out to the, runway and we both had to do another running thing and finish the shot and that's what we did finish the shot and then we went home so was any kind of paperwork filed about the injury no they of course they said osha was notified you know osha was no but osha you would think would would talk to the victims that were hurt we never got a call from OSHA. Nobody t talked to us. They claimed they told OSHA, but they never did. They're, they're, we needed to be talked to. So we started talking amongst ourselves to other people and because they were saying, well, what happened? And uh, well, this is what happened. And our driver uh, was under the influence. And that's what happens in our work. If you're not, if you're not really straight and clean, and you have drugs in you, your timing is not going to be the same from one rehearsal to another or from a rehearsal to a take. You're not going to, it changes. You're not, you're not there. I mean, you, the, if, you, if we miss our mark or overslide our mark, somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get killed. And that's why it's so important to, to you know, that you have uh, the people that, that know, understand what these drugs can do to you, especially the pain pills. And so many of them are living on pain pills today. That it, 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 I don't know, I, it's hard for me to understand because I was never given those pain pills. It was like over the counter and ice and heat. <laughs> and you healed yourself that way. You didn't get into the other stuff. So did you voice your concerns about your driver possibly Absolutely. Being I voiced it to my superior. I, I voiced it to... Uh, Who was your superior on uh, the show? Uh, well, I... Uh, Ronnie? Uh, yeah. Ronnie Rondell? I asked him to come over and I told him what we knew. And I said, please, 
this can this has to stop. And I'd also also complained about our automobiles, our cars that we were there. Each angel had a, her own car. Well, these cars had become buckets of bolts in the four years we were driving, and nothing was done to them uh, to keep them in shape. And uh, other stu other shows were using those cars. And here we're expected to do this great stuff with these cars, and the shocks are bad, brakes go to the floor. Um, d d they just needed overhaul. They needed to be upgraded, and they weren't. And I com complained about the cars and the safety of that. And I said, please, those cars that need to be next year, they better be in better shape than they are now. And of course, it's all ignored totally ignored, and um, then when uh, it came down to the Screen Actors Guild, uh, they, they said, well, we'll see if we can get through to Aaron, and uh, this is Aaron, Spelling. Aaron Spelling, and I waited six months, and I saw the lady in the hall one day at a meeting over there, and, they, and I said, well, what about, did you ever get, no, we can't get through to him either. I had, uh, so I wrote three letters to him, asking for an audience. I asked, I called three times. Oh no, he's in pilot season, he's too busy, he can't see you. And I thought, okay. And I, all I was gonna really do was to thank him for the opportunity to work the show and would it be possible to get a reference letter from him. That was, that was all I was gonna do. And, but I couldn't even get to see him. Nobody would let me see him. Now, he, here's a man that signs my checks that, that, I, that I work for. And my boss won't see me? And it, it behooves any producer to speak to a, a, a stunt person. It just, you, you've got to speak. You may not want to hear what they have to say, but you've, you owe it to them to listen to what they have to say.